Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. And today I'm going to introduce you to some of my fake food. <laughs> Can you tell I have a stink up my butt right now? My daughter this morning mentioned... Yeah, I'm in one of those moods today. Anyhow, I shouldn't be so mean. No, I'm not mean. Anyhow, what I want to say is that my daughter... My daughter mentioned that this girl had posted um, an image or a post saying to be kind to animals. But it wasn't anything aggressive where... Let me first say where she posted it. Okay, uh, someone had posted one of those meat boxes where you, uh, you could buy meat... And they send it to you in a box, a whole bunch of meat. So she posted a comment saying that she, um, that basically people should be a little more compassionate. But she wasn't aggressive at all, according to what my daughter was saying. And the attacks this girl was getting by posting that was just, it wasn't needed. I don't think that wasn't needed. I mean, you know, you have your, your way of explaining why you eat meat. Uh, even though we don't agree with it, but, you know, you could very nicely tell them, say, you know what, I know that I'm eating an animal and that's what I want to do. Uh, but you don't have to be attacking the way the way she was attacked. Then my daughter kind of saw that and felt bad for her. And she posted a link on, um, oh, what's his name, Erica? Earthling Ed. Earthling Ed. And how he, this guy's got uh, patience like... I can't even tell you. Not only they is he... Him, they call him vegan Jesus. The vegan Jesus, that's right. Uh, not only is he kind when he talks, even though they're like telling him off, he does it with such grace and he explains why there is no such thing as compassionate, uh, um, humane killing and that basically today, in today's age, we should head towards a vegan diet because we have no choice. Our planet is dying. Uh, we don't have to eat animals. We can still survive without um, without killing animals. So, someone commented after my daughter and basically was very rude and says, I can't wait till I eat my big, fat, juicy steak. And, you know, Erica very nicely, you know, did not make a big stink out of it. But the point is that there's nothing worse than being attacked. They say vegans attack meat eaters. We don't attack. What we are trying to do is spread the word of uh, having a compassionate a compassionate lifestyle where we don't have to kill because we don't need to. But so many times they tell me we have uh, food that's not food. Uh, fake food. I'm not sure what they mean by fake food. That vegan is fake food. Well, I'll tell you right now, my food isn't fake at all. I'll give you an example. Breadcrumbs. I think that meat eaters have breadcrumbs too, right? A little bit of flour. So I'm sure meat eaters eat flour too, right? So that's not fake. In here, I have my uh, vegan egg. Basically, I'm using uh, milled black seeds. I'm sure that's not fake. I think it's a seed, right? Seed makes a plant. And then if we eat it, does it turn fake because we're vegan or do they just say that because they want to aggravate us? Okay, so that's not fake. So that's what's in here. I'm making stuffed olives today. So I have what you call my vegan meat, which is made from flour where I wash, I wash the starch out. But it's still something that meat eaters eat, right? I'm sure you have flour in some of your ingredients, right? So... In here, there's some carrots that I cooked my vegan meat in. There's a little bit of celery that I cooked my vegan meat in. There's a little bit of garlic that I cooked my vegan meat in. Um, I put a little bit of potatoes. I think meat eaters eat potatoes, right? So I have a little bit of potato in here. And that helps me hold my, bind my meat. So I can put olives around it. So there's nothing fake about our food. So I'm tired of hearing people say, uh, oh, I'll try some of that fake food. Or I'll try some uh, vegan fake food. Well, our food isn't fake. I don't eat plastic. I don't eat cardboard, even though cardboard is made out of trees. So, But I don't eat cardboard. I'm not a beaver. 
So I'm just tired of that. Why do we want... And I'm being mean right now. Yes, I am being mean. I, I said I wasn't going to be mean, but I'm being mean. It's just that it becomes too much. I see these comments under my recipes. Uh, I see these comments if somebody posts, uh, try going vegan, uh, stop eating animals. Animals have feelings. Well, animals do have feelings. I've seen cows cry for their babies when they're taken away. Um, I cry when I see baby chicks get minced up because... People want to have eggs. There's my egg right there. It didn't hurt at all. So when we say, um, why don't you try having a more compassionate lifestyle? We're not trying. We're not throwing rocks at you. We're not trying to uh, starve you where you have no food. And yes, okay, so maybe you have to learn how to cook compared to... Um, I call it the easier way out because everything's ready for you. The animal's killed for you. You go to the store. Uh, it's already prepared because they did that end of it where even if you eat something that comes out of a package, there's animal in it. So the animals are already killed for you and then somebody put the rest of the ingredients like flour and breadcrumbs to put your meal together. Uh, so you might have to... Uh, learn how to make food from scratch like I'm doing right now because it's a tradition over the holidays we make stuffed olives we don't make olives stuffed olives every day and I'm gonna start doing this while I'm talking to you uh, here's my olives uh, my mother used to take an olive and she used to kind of make like a coil uh, but I kind of went the easy way out because I've got so many things to do that I don't have time for that but I did take the olives and I cut them in fours and it just makes my life a little easier. So anyhow, let me finish telling you. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you before I continue my little rant. Uh, you want to take just a little bit. It depends how big you want to make uh, your olive. Uh, but you want to take about this size. And then you basically put about three pieces. I did divide my, I did divide my uh, my olive in four, and I end up using three pieces of my olive, uh, of my green olive, and we get the ones that are stuffed. But I do use the insides too. Sometimes I mix it in with my meat, and sometimes it just ends up in with my meat. Like, I'm okay with that if there's a little piece in because it's just simply delicious. Sorry, I'm off camera. Um, this is how I make my stuffed olives. And I'll tell you later what I did with this. But very easy to make. And then I roll it in my flour, which you can't see because my camera is... There we go. I roll it in my flour. Then I put it in my vegan egg. And then I throw this in my breadcrumbs and presto I have delicious Italian olives look how easy that is so making vegan food isn't hard at all it's a matter of just preparing yourself have your stuff prepared and you're good to go so I'm just gonna put this here for now while I talk to you uh, I do need some Erica can you give me some uh, veggie paper please and being that I hate cleaning up after myself, this is what I do. I put paper down. Makes my life easier when I'm finished. I roll up my paper. It goes into compost. And my counter doesn't have anything stuck to it. Now, if you want, you can... Oh, my spoon went in there. Uh, if you want, you can roll it one more time in my egg. And you could get even a thicker crust. And it goes back into my breadcrumbs. And there is my beautiful olive. Thank you. And I put them on paper. Makes my life easy. Okay. So, and then I put them on a plate. I'll show you. And they get all lined up. And they're going to be ready for me to fry come the New Year's. But yeah, so you do have to maybe make some stuff from scratch. But not everybody wants to make stuffed olives. So, you know, you could basically just eat delicious food. Very easy to prepare. Uh, I have recipes, but you know what? There's a whole bunch of recipes out there. So there's my olive again. Very simple. One, two, three. 
three. I find that it's just perfect when I use three. You could put four if you want, but it makes it easier for me to uh, to bread later on. So I'm going to make a bunch and I'm going to put them there. But yeah, you know, our food is not fake and eating a compassionate diet isn't a bad thing to do because we, we all know today that eating meat is not good for us. Uh, we all know today that uh, number one in the States, I think, is heart disease and it's associated with fatty meats. So taking away animal products is a plus because everybody that has their health changes, their cholesterol goes down, their blood pressure changes, people that are diabetic, no longer diabetic, type 2 diabetes. I'm not sure about type 1, but I know that type 2, it goes away. It really does go away. So going plant-based because vegan is not, it's a different beast. Vegan has a whole different meaning behind it. People say, oh, I eat vegan sometimes. Okay, number one, sometimes means that you don't always eat plant-based. And vegan means you do it for the animals. So if you're doing it for the animals, you don't eat vegan sometimes. Because that doesn't make you vegan. Okay, vegan has to do with not hurting the animals in not killing and letting animals suffer. That's what vegan is all about. Now, if you're talking plant-based because you're going to wear your leather shoes and your fur coat, then you're not doing it for the animals. You're not a vegan. Realize that what you're putting in your mouth once lived and never said, here's my permission for you to kill me. And it's just sad that it's come to that. My daughter feels the same way. Uh, if she posts anything to do with animals, uh, people won't even comment or say it's true. They just ignore. They say they don't want to be told what to do. Well, we're not telling you what to do. We're just telling you um, that animal one time walked, loved, because I know they can love. I see uh, maybe they don't love the same way we love. But they care about their babies. I see mommy du the ducklings uh, making sure that every little duckling is right behind her. I see uh, how a deer will nudge her little doe uh, when it's time to cross the road at the country. Um, so we know that they care and they teach their animals how to live a life where they're not going to get hurt or killed. If they don't want to die on the road, I'm sure they don't want to die by iron eyes. Right? Anyhow, so just I had to say what I had to say today. And I said, you know what? While I'm stuffing my olives, I wish I could have done this on a live chat. But right now, I can't do this and look up. Otherwise, I'll never have it finished. Because I still have a lot of food to prepare for New Year's. Today, actually, uh, this time around, I took some easy way out. <laughs> Usually, I make my meat if I'm making, uh, well, the sliders I made the other day, so that, that meat's ready. All we have to do is uh, fry them up and or pan cook them, or eat. they could even go in the oven if I want to. And then I have to just set make the burgers that day little sliders because the kids love it even the adults love it believe it or not so that's okay that I made um, I do want to make some of my wraps uh, just because I became vegan doesn't mean that I didn't like the taste of meat I used to love meat guys I really did I used to love the taste of it I didn't like what how it came on my plate but I used to love the taste of meat and I'm the first one to tell you I did now, today, uh, the smell of certain things really revolt me. Um, I know that they have these meats have a resemblance of the, um, the 
the real meat or the animal product. Uh, it has that resemblance, but it's really not quite the same. Trust me. Otherwise, none of us would be eating it because we can't even handle the smell of it. So, but yeah, it's a little sad that people have to be so defensive that we're, God knows what we're doing. It's like we're throwing rocks at them, but we're not. We're just telling them, you know, open your eyes. Uh, I know that uh, until my eyes were open, I was no different. I was no different. I used to, I used to eat animal products. I was no different. You know, sad but true. You know, and then I remember uh, that day that Erica came home. And I'll never forget that day. I mean, I wasn't even doing it for the animals that day. I was doing it for her. She was like devastated. Okay. Oh, JJ, stop it. Let me just do these. Someone at the door, Erica? So I did do it for my daughter. But, you know, as I went on, I pretty much realized that, wow, I can't believe, you know, the horror these animals actually have to live for us. And, you know, I've had these excuses. People have given me excuses where they say, well, my animals come from a happy farm. Well, yeah, I'm sure they were happy while they were living on the happy farm until they were pretty much uh, brought to a place where they were so scared that they would back up because they knew and they would hear the screams of other animals that were being killed. I bet that part of it wasn't very happy for them. So, yeah. You know? When you hear that, you realize that, oh my God, I can't believe I actually was part of that. Okay, I'm going to double coat these. I'm using my fake food. <laughs> I'm sorry. I say that because it gets me so pissed off. Oh, JJ. There's probably somebody coming to the door. JJ. And I've got to grate some more. i got to make some more uh, breadcrumbs. Yeah. Look at that. Look how beautiful they are. Nice and big, too. I could have made them a little smaller. But they're so good. Beautiful. Now, if you've never tried it, this is a very... Especially where my parents come from, it's a tradition to make stuffed olives. Like I said, the way my mom used to make it was a little uh, longer. She used to take the green olives with the pit, and she used to... Um, make like a coil and then she used to put her meat and she did use meat i used meat too one one time um, she used to put her meat inside the coil and then she used to of course it would go into flour egg and then breadcrumbs and today i make my meat and i've had people that were not vegan um, try my stuffed olives and they swore that they could not tell the difference between the one their wives made and the ones I made them try. So, it's possible. If you really want to, you can reproduce foods, especially when you're doing that transition where you need to have something that resembles the food you ate. Uh, it's possible. You could actually do it. And sometimes it's even better. Sometimes it's even better than the original. I say today that all the food I make is better. But I'm sure I'm going to get an argument out of that one too from someone. Let me just get a fork. I'm sure someone's going to say that's not true. Impossible that you can make vegan food taste good. Well... I know my food tastes good. 
And I've had meat eaters and non-meat eaters eat my food. And like I said, you don't have to follow my recipe. Someone's probably saying, oh, that's because you want us to come and do your recipes. There's a lot of vegan recipes out there. If you go on YouTube, all you have to do is type, uh, type in something and some channel is going to come up for you. It doesn't have to be mine. Now, if you go to mine, it'll make me happy, but you don't have to. Oh, JJ. He barks at everything. Chi Chi, you have to be a nice dog. You're supposed to greet people. Now, what did I put in my meat? Okay, so I'll tell you what I put in my meat. Let me put this here. Um, I made my seitan meat from scratch, and I did the... Um, where I wash my flour. I buy beautiful unbleached organic flour. Uh, but you don't have to do it that way. It is a little longer to do. I don't find it takes long at all because I'm so used to making it. I'm able to do other things at the same time while I'm preparing my meat. Um, but you can just make seitan meat. And today you could even buy seitan meat already prepared for you uh, like I said I do it because it costs less but if you're not looking at cost um, you can actually buy vegan meat today and it's cheap it's not cheap sorry it's easy fast to do and all you have to do is kind of mince it up in uh, a food processor that's what I do. I mince it up. Like Since I'm cooking my meat from scratch or I'm making my seitan, I do put a little bit of nutmeg. I put some allspice. I put uh, garlic. I put onion. I put some carrots. And I put celery. And then I mince it all up with those ingredients. Except for the bay leaf comes out. The allspice uh, berries come out. And... Um, the, uh, the nutmeg is grated, so that stays. Uh, and then I mince it up in the food processor. And what I do is I taste it if I want it. Because it has a nutmeg uh, flavor when you're, making, um, when you're making these olives or if you've tried these olives. So if I want to put a little extra nutmeg, I do so. I just need extra. Yeah, I'm going to use some of... Look at this. This is... The water from my olives. I don't throw it away because it has the flavor of the olives so it just makes everything taste yummy because you want the flavor of the olives. Okay so I'm, I'm getting like I'm going off topic. Okay so what was I saying? Okay so you mince everything up, you taste it, uh, you might want to add extra um, you want to add extra nutmeg uh, salt, I say, if you're going to use like the water of the olives, go easy with the salt. Otherwise, it will get salty on you. Uh, I do use some of my vegan grated cheese that I make. I have some beautiful cashew uh, grated cheese that I make. I do use a little bit of that. I do a little bit of breadcrumbs in there. Very little, not a lot. And I use potato. Now, you can either... Uh, cook your potato and then use that mash it up and that helps bind your meat it just helps it there we go we're gonna just do these and then i'm gonna put them back into my egg wash and just it gives you a nice big thick crust but otherwise you don't have to you could just do it once But you can double, called double dipping, I guess. I like it because it gives it a nice crunch when you, when you bite into it. So look how easy this was, really. And this is a traditional food that, you know, you would think, oh, why would I want to give up all that delicious food that I'm accustomed to? Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I make cutlets that you can't even tell the difference 
if uh, if it's animal product or if it's not. So, trust me when I tell you, you can make all kinds of delicious food. You can make all kinds of delicious food. And that's how I make my... <laughs> I was going to say something. <laughs> Bite your tongue, Connie. Eee, that's how I make my stuffed olives. My delicious vegan stuffed olives. And as these sit, they just firm up and it makes it so much easier to fry also. Get fried. But if you don't like frying, um, you could put these in an air fryer. It's really up to you. I tend to go a little more traditional when I make these foods, so I will fry them, but they don't stay in the oil long, trust me. They get brown really fast, and everything inside is basically cooked. You know, everything's cooked. So you just want to brown these. I'm not going to brown any for you today, but I will put some pictures of my other olives that I've made. I just want to taste. Mm. I can use some more of my waters because it's getting thick. And that's how easy it is, guys. So, now I know a lot of you that follow me are not vegan. Uh, you're either vegetarian or trying to transition to a vegan diet. Um, or some of you, like you tell me, only came because you wanna try some of my recipes. That's okay too, because every meal that you try is one less meal that has animal in it. And I'm really in, like I said, I started doing it for my daughter, but by the end, when you see what happens to those poor animals, I do it for the animals. I do it more for the animals now than anything else. I love these food, but I hate getting lollipop fingers when... You're breading your stuff, and all of a sudden, your fingers are just like growing on you. Okay, so let me just, yeah, I'm still good there. Yeah, maybe I'll use a spoon for that. Yeah, so, like I said, right now, all I think about is those poor, and, you know, think about it, guys. Uh, a lot of people have lamb over Christmas, uh, over Christmas, over New Year's. Think about it. What is lamb? It's a baby. It's like, it's a baby animal. Like it just came out of mama's womb. I mean, it's, it's a baby. It's like when you start putting these pieces together, you say, oh my God. And you know, today, uh, when I think back, I say, oh my God, how ignorant was it? Was I? When, you know, we used to go shopping for lamb and make sure it's uh, one of those lambs that are still like milking, milking lambs. You know how small milking lambs are? They're like, uh, when I think about it today, I just want to like hit my head against the wall and say like, what is, what was wrong with you, Connie? How did you not put two and two together? Was your taste buds more important than... Uh, the life of that animal because basically that's what it came down to that I thought my taste buds was more important than the animal that lost its life so I can have that moment of euphoria and I'll tell you something right now I have the same delicious taste buds and I know I will not hurt that animal you know, and then there's those excuses that meat eaters give you. Well, do you know how many animals die in the fields for you? And in my head, I'm there like, oh, really? Okay, so then I am sure animals are going to die in the field for me, especially if we're going to go to these uh, big stores that everything is done in mass production. I'm sure they're going to die, but think about it. You also, uh, not only are you killing the animal you eat, or have somebody kill it, but that animal ate what I ate. So it also, aren't you also killing the, killing the animals in the fields? You know, we're not perfect. As vegans, we're not perfect, but we're going to do the best we can. We're going to do the best we can to make 
the least amount of suffering possible. I mean, if I had a choice, I'd go pick my grains by hand if I could. But I do need to eat. And so, you know, when I get thrown that, that at me or I read about it, it gets me angry because you're telling me that we're killing animals in the field, um, but yet you're killing the animals in the field and the ones that eat the food that was in the field. So who's doing more killing, really? You know? There's so many excuses people come up, and those are people that are just out to get us upset. That's what it comes down to. And you know what? Uh, I say that karma has a way... Karma has a way to show her face one way or another. And yeah, we're not perfect. I'm sure when I walk outside in the summer, I end up step, stepping on a, an ant. And I'm sure that when I put my my shovel in the soil when I'm planting a garden, I cut an, I cut a worm in half. But, you know, the intention was never that. That was not my intention to do it. Let me tell you something. If I see an ant in my house or a spider in my house, you know what I do? I take that spider out. I'm not going to kill it because it's in my house. That's intentional. When you... Know that that animal has to die for you. That's intentional. Not the other way around. Because you know it has to die. And you know that you can live without it dying. That's the thing. You know that it can live, that you can live without the animal dying. Okay, so I'm going to have to make a new batch of my egg. And I'm not going to throw that out. I'm just going to keep adding liquids to it and a little miso. That's what I do. I add a little bit of miso to it. I just bought some white miso, but I'm going to use up my dark one. Because it's just as good. I'm going to use some ground flax. This is how I make my egg, guys. There we go. And I don't measure because I have a lot to bread still. So I'm going to probably end up making um, another batch after this for sure. I'll try and stretch it. That's nutritional yeast, guys. It'll give the, it'll give the um, olives a nice little cheesy taste. I'm going to put a little bit of this salty water. And a little bit of water. And that's how I make my egg wash. Normally I use, um, sorry, uh, normally I use white miso. But I had white miso and I decided I was going to buy some red miso. And then my white one finished and I didn't want to go out and buy more miso. I said, might as well, might as well use the one I have and I'm adding water because the amount of uh, ground flax that I use will start becoming gelatinous like an egg so I just have to wait a bit for it I'm gonna get some extra flour that I need sometimes I use cornstarch but this time I figured I'm just gonna use plain flour and I will have to probably make some more breadcrumbs Okay, let me wash my hands. I'll be right back. Breadcrumbs. And it's easy to make breadcrumbs, guys. If you uh, buy bread, I'm sure that uh, you could even buy a loaf of bread and just let it and just let it dry. And you can just put it through. You could either grate it. Or you can uh, put it through a food processor and you've got breadcrumbs. Like, see? These are all the butts that somehow uh, got left unwrapped and then it dried up. And so not to throw it out, I just take it and I put it in a bag. And then when I'm ready, I make breadcrumbs. Or you could just simply go out and buy it, of course. Okay, so here are my olives that I've already started to prepare. And 
I have a lot more to do but very easy guys very easy to do and I try not to put too many layers I will do it like another layer on top because if you put too much layers then you end up squishing them and then they're not going to look so pretty when you fry them so try not to and you also need room right if you're going to do this ahead of time uh, you're going to need room to prepare these uh, you could also freeze them and then take them out and just drop them in frozen you don't want to thaw them out you just want to take them and drop them in frozen in the oil but be careful when you do that that the oil doesn't spit back at you and you're not going to message me and say you know you almost killed me while i was doing my stuff olives but you have to know what you're doing it's like when you're buying nuggets at the uh at the grocery store and then you throw them in a deep fryer or whatever you could try and air fry them like i say i'm doing them the traditional way so they will get deep fried but they really don't take long it's like they go in boom and they're out and then you put them on paper and you let most of the oil come out this is like once a year guys that we don't eat this all the time and we're gonna have a lot of people at my house so you know one or two is not going to kill anybody okay so i'm going to prepare some more it looked like very little uh, meat but it really wasn't because you don't need that much and by the time you put the olives and the breadcrumbs they get pretty big here this is before it's breaded and this is after it's breaded so there's the size i'm not sure if you could see it once it's done, that's what it looks like compared to this. And you want to kind of shape them like an olive. There you go. I can make them even smaller. My mother-in-law used to make them really, really tiny. Really, really tiny. Compared to the way my mom used to make it, this is like the size my mom used to make. And my sister Andy made some for Christmas because we were at her house and they were just simply delicious. Her olives were delicious. Gabby's probably going to have them at Easter time. So that's when we eat this stuff. We don't usually eat this every day. I'm not going to go out and say, oh guys, who wants stuffed olives? I'm going to make stuffed olives. No, we don't do that. Unless we have still some in the freezer. And then as you're moving things around the freezer, you say, oh look, I still have some stuffed olives. And Anybody wants some stuffed olives, then I'll pull it out of the freezer. But nobody gets uh, nobody gets stuffed olives the rest of the uh, year because they all get eaten. Oh, this one didn't get cut. And that's it. Anyhow, I could keep talking and talking and talking. I don't usually like to put anybody down and that's not my intention my intention was not to put anybody down but you know guys you know we don't mean bad when we post something that has to do with vegan and yes you have the right to do what you want really you can do exactly what you want unfortunately you know everything that we do wrong because I today I believe killing an animal for food is wrong because it's not that oh my god if we don't eat that we're all gonna die right uh, i'm sure there's people that have no choice but to fish or to kill an animal because they need it for food because of where they live and they don't have what we have i mean i know I could tell you how many grocery stores I have where I live. I have a Depaner just a street away from me. I have a grocery store right up the street from me. If I take the car two minutes away from me, I have a huge grocery store. And if I drive just a little further, another two minutes, we're talking a total of four minutes now. There's another grocery store there, another huge one. And I have a huge Asian store right across from that grocery store, four minutes away. Mm, I'm going to get a lot of olives. 
I just wanted to tell you how I felt. And it's important to tell people how you feel sometimes. And why we feel a certain way. But what I really want to say is I love you guys, all of you. And I get some of the most amazing, amazing comments. And I'm going to do that. One day I'm going to write down all these awesome comments. And I am going to make a video thanking every one of you. And if you have questions, maybe we could do that also. If you have a question that you want me to... Uh, Q&A. Yeah, Q&A. We could do one of those. How about a live Q&A? Uh, I would do a live one if somebody would read the screen because I'm so freaking blind. I'll read them to you. I won't be able to read anything because I keep messing my eyesight with these crazy glasses I wear. I broke my prescription glasses, so I got dollar store magnifying glasses. And yeah, I can see what I'm doing when it's close by, but now it messed up my eyesight, so I gotta go see the doctor. Okay, so Erica. What did you think about that comment today? I think it's silly. That's what I think. Like, what did that girl post that was so out of the... No, because it was an ad for a meat subscription box. And so there are some people who are vegan who are, who are saying things like, go vegan, or uh, another um, woman posted a, a picture saying, basically, like... Does your food scream or something like that? Okay. And uh, there were some not very tons nice tons of people who were being so rude. Like I won't even repeat what was said because it was just horrible. It's like why, why do you have to be so mean? They didn't say anything wrong. They all they said was go vegan, but they took it, you know. They took it wrong. They, they took, took it, it wrong. that anyway. So I posted. I ended up posting. Um, a video from Earthling Ed, it was his speech, and uh, one person responded and said, uh, I'm going to go eat my sirloin steak, or I can't wait to eat my sirloin steak on the barbecue later, or something like that. It's just stupid. Well, karma has a way of showing up, and... But it's not know? even about karma, it's just, like... Well, like, I believe, today I believe, Erica, that because of us eating and hurting animals when it's not needed that our karma is illness i believe that you know call me crazy but i believe that's their way of you know sticking it to us and say you wanted to eat me now suffer that's what i believe you know some of you might think it's not so but i do believe that is our karma illness is our karma you eat the right foods, your body's going to thank you for it. It's going to make you strong. It's going to make you do things that, you know. I see people that are my age that are on medication. And one thing or another, they're on medication. And I've heard the excuse, tell me someone that's over 50 that's not on medication. Well, my whole family is over 50 and not on medication. So, you know, and we were all on medication. All the older ones, we were, except for my sister, Andy, because she was the youngest one. Uh, but we were all on something. I couldn't eat without curling up into a freaking ball after I ate my food. Doctors couldn't even find what was wrong with me. He had no idea. He was just prescribing me, try this and see if this works. So I was on these freaking radioactive pills. That's what they look like to me. <clears throat> and in the beginning, it worked. And come to the end, again, it didn't help. Instead of taking one, I had to take two after. You know? Like, that's not fixing the problem. That's camouflaging the problem. You know, my husband, being diabetic, he was on uh, high cholesterol medication. He was on uh, sugar uh, for his diabetes. Yes, he wasn't full-blown, but he was there. Sometimes it was good and sometimes it wasn't. 
Now he doesn't have that problem anymore. My brother-in-law, he was on heart pills. He was on, you name it. He was on all kinds of pills where he had to slowly uh, remove the medication. That's my brother-in-law. Yeah, crazy, huh? I just had to rant. Oh, look at that. Next time I won't even cut them. I'm just going to rip the balls, the olives. There's half there. And they're so good. If you guys haven't tried this, you have to try. Make a small batch. And just try them. If you love olives, if olives is you, like you, it's your thing, you enjoy eating olives, then you're going to love these. And what a great finger food if you have people coming over. You know, even if you're watching a game, finger food, watching the football or hockey and you have a couple of friends over, you make some of these or make them and freeze them and then just pull them out and make them just before they come. And these are good. They don't have to be eaten hot. That's the best part about these. You can make them and you can piece a celery string. Um... You can make them, and you can uh, put them on the table, and you can eat these cold. You can eat them like that. I love them with a squeeze of either lime or lemon on top. Or you could even make a nice little ranch if you like that. Anyhow, but I want to tell you, have a happy new year. Let's learn to love each other. And you know what? Let's not just think about ourselves, you know? I believe that veganism is the way of the future. Not only for our planet, but I believe that uh, when you are compassionate towards animals, I believe you're compassionate towards people. That means less wars less all of that that's what i believe i'm gonna pop this all over in my mouth because it's making me hungry mm-hmm delicious <coughs> jj woke up <coughs> okay so i'm gonna say i love you and jj i'm gonna say i love you i'm gonna say happy new year I'm sorry about this little rant, but it, it had to be said. I get so upset, and I try not to bring up, uh, you know, comparisons between meat eaters and uh, vegan. I believe vegan is the way to go. Um, I'm sure some of you won't be happy about it. Well, I'm sorry. That's who I am, and that's what I believe today. And I believe that if we can all start at the bottom and not hurt and I'm talking about even an ant. If you see an ant, don't step on it. Take it. Bring it outside where it belongs. I believe when we start caring about the smaller beings on our planet, that we're going to love the bigger ones. It's, it's natural. You know, if you can't watch somebody suffer or an animal suffer, you don't want to see a human suffer. It goes hand in hand. So I'm going to say, I love you. Happy New Year's. I want to say I love you all, and I'll see you soon. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawson Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.